Every electric golf cart has a controller in it. This one is a Curtis, which is a popular brand. Uh, they're used for everything from golf carts to forklifts to electric cars. This one here is 48 to 72 volts. That means you can run it on anywhere from four to six 12 volt batteries. The exact voltage doesn't necessarily mean what you'll see on your voltmeter. Usually when we talk about volts, it's, uh, it's nominal. We're just saying that a, a battery is 12 volts, when in fact a 12 volt battery is higher than that when it's fully charged, and actually less than that when it's fully discharged. All DC controllers are going to use PWM, pulse width modulation. That's a really fancy way of saying that it turns the electricity from the batteries to the motor on and off very, very fast, thousands of times per second. Imagine if you had a light switch that you could turn off really quick, back and forth, on and off, on and off. You would actually be able to make that light bulb pretty much whatever brightness you'd want. It's a really fancy dimmer. Now these modern controllers are all solid state. There's no moving parts inside of them. It's all just modern electronics. Now on this one, it's also potted. That means that all the electronics are uh, sealed inside of an epoxy inside. If you tried to take this controller apart, um, there's really nothing you can get at. It would be very difficult to uh, replace any of the components, anything like that. I started off with this controller in, in my car, and later on, I upgraded to an open source controller. It's called the Open Revolt controller. Uh, in my case, it was one of the first ones we were calling the Cougar. Now with the Open Revolt controller, uh, it's not potted. If I need to replace any of the, uh, the components in there, I can easily do that. The software is upgradable. There's people working on software all the time. Somebody will go, oh, I got this great new feature for this. So it's a really neat project. Another thing is that the open source controller is rated at 500 amps and up to 144 volts. That blows this controller out of the water. In fact, the Curtis controller that the open source controller is equivalent to cost about $1,500 on up. But you can build that open source controller yourself for only a few hundred dollars worth of electronics. And all this is available online. You can download a parts list. You can download uh, full instructions. It's fantastic. You can check all that out uh, over at ecomodder.com. Our friends have a really nice wiki there. You can build the controller yourself, no problem. Another great way to go is go to paulandsabrinasevstuff.com. Paul has uh, kits available to you that include the bus bars, uh, pre-made circuit board. Uh, it's pretty easy stuff. I have no background in electronics, and yet I was able to assemble one of these and make it work, and it's been fantastic. To hook up the controller, basically you just have to run the power cables onto the controller. Uh, already here, it's pre-marked B minus. That's where the cable from the negative end of the battery pack goes. B plus, that's where the positive end of the battery pack goes. And M minus, that one goes to the negative end of the motor. It's all pretty straightforward. You do want to make sure these terminals are nice and clean before you start. I kind of like these uh, green Brillo pads. They're sort of an abrasive plastic, so you can scrub down these terminals, make them nice and shiny before you get started. For the other connections on here, they're going to be for power and for the potentiometer, the throttle control to the controller. On this Curtis controller, the top pin is your positive power to it. Uh, on the Curtis ones, they'll usually take anywhere from 12 volts to pack voltage. Now keep in mind, if you have pack voltage positive to that pin, be really, really careful if you're ever pulling that connector off because the B minus bus bar is right next to it. So if you pull that connector off, you bump that on the way there, you're gonna send your full battery pack right through that little end connector and it's a great way to just go and zap it off the end. So always make sure that uh, the battery pack's disconnected when you're working on things like installing or removing the controller. Now on the Open Revolt controller, it uses only 12 volts to run all the logic circuitry in the controller. And we've got a red wire and a black wire to run the power there. So let's take a quick look at that. This is the Open Revolt car controller I'm currently using in the Electro Metro. As you can see from the outside, it's nothing that fancy looking. It's just kind of a big box with uh, some electronics inside. And that's really all it is. Uh, as you can see on this end, we've got the B plus and the B minus terminals. These two little wires here are the for the throttle. These three connections right here 
Red and black are for positive and negative power to the car's regular 12 volt battery. The yellow is for 12 volt power out uh, to go to the main contactor. So the controller itself actually turns the contactor on and off. Then on the other end of the controller, we have here the M minus bus bar. This is a little unusual design. Typically all three bus bars are on the same side of the controller. This is something I requested because to me, it felt like all those bus bars were really close together and it was kind of hard to uh, get a wrench in there without worries of uh, you know conducting wrong. Uh, the other thing back on this side, right up here, this is a serial uh, connection and this allows me to connect the controller to a small computer in the car and I can display information uh, in real time from the controller up to that display. Now this being a home-built controller, all these electronics are accessible. If for whatever reason you needed to uh, fix it, rebuild it, change it, you can do that. The downside to it is it really isn't waterproof the way the commercial ones are. So in this case, all I did was I took silicon caulk, ran a bead on the inside of the cover, and around the corners of the plexiglass end caps to waterproof the whole thing. From the outside of the controller, you really can't see too much when it's mounted down in the car. Uh, right away, we can see the sheet metal cover. Uh, this is uh, assembled on there with some clear silicon to keep all the rain and other bad weather out. On the end, we have a plexiglass end. We've got the M minus bus bar on this end. That's a little different from the, uh, the Curtis controller. We also have a COM port for data. Now over here, um, I drilled two holes in the cover because there's two LEDs on the circuit board. This one's green, this one's yellow. The green one indicates power, and then the yellow one will also be on to indicate that the microprocessor is working right. And it also shows us troubleshooting codes, like if the throttle became unplugged, the controller will automatically shut down, and this light will flash to indicate that that's what the issue is. Great, we've got our controller, but how do we hook our gas pedal up to it? Well, that's where the potentiometer comes into play. A potentiometer is just like a real basic dimmer switch sort of a thing. Uh, it changes the resistance depending on where you set the dial. In this case, we're using a 0 to 5,000 ohm potentiometer, a 0, a zero to 5K. Uh, occasionally, controllers will use a 5K to 0 or sometimes even voltage, but 0 to 5,000 ohm potentiometer is pretty much standard. So I've got that inside the potentiometer enclosure, and I'll open that up so you can see inside. And this is one part that I actually bothered to buy uh, because it's, this, it's the right way to go. It already has a little swing arm on it. Um, it's stainless steel. I also put it inside the, the enclosure to protect it from the weather. Let's take a real quick close-up look at that, and we'll see how it attaches to the gas pedal. Now this is a Curtis PB6. You can mail order this from any electric vehicle parts supplier. Um, on here I've got uh, a couple of bolts that physically connect it to the box that I've got it mounted in. Um, we'll get a different view for looking at the bottom of the box, but basically you can see it's just a little swing arm and it's spring loaded. So when that cable pulls on it, it's going to swing that arm and it's going to change the resistance on that potentiometer which goes out to the controller. Now I'm just going to hop in the car right now and I'm going to press the gas pedal up and... So here you can see the original throttle cable from the gas pedal is now routed instead to our potentiometer. When I press down on the gas pedal it pulls the potentiometer and when I let up on the gas pedal the return spring pulls it back to its original place, back to zero ohms. Here I got just a little bit different view for you. Um, this is the bottom of the enclosure box. You can see here's the cable from the gas pedal, the throttle cable. And then the little gray cable right here, uh, that is the output of the potentiometer. So that's what actually goes out to the controller. It's two wires and it's the resistance between those two wires that's measured by the controller. And then that's what controls our speed is the microprocessor in the controller reads what that resistance is and based on its programming, it changes the pulse width modulation out to the motor. Now I really didn't modify the throttle any. Uh, I did make sure to nicely remove the throttle cable from the engine and label it. 
uh, before we took the engine out. But right here, this is the original throttle cable coming out through the firewall. The gas pedal connects up on the other side. This just loops down, does a gentle curve, and comes up into the bottom of the potentiometer box. Now on the other end of the, uh, that potentiometer cable, I've got it pulled out of its uh, loom covering, so you can see. It's just two little wires. One's black, one's white. It doesn't really matter which is which because it's the difference between the two wires that's really what's being measured. And as you can see, is some, uh, it's just some basic spade connectors. So you do want to make sure you have a, um, you know, a, a, a covering over the top. I like these spade connectors that come with the insulation already on them. If you don't have that, you'll have to add a little, uh, uh, little bit of electrical tape or something like that. And then it wouldn't hurt also to just wrap some electrical tape uh, over that whole thing when you're done and then cover that all in some sort of a split loom.